All right, guys, how's it going? I was thinking about my next build and trying to decide what switch I want to try next. By my count, there are almost 90 varieties of Cherry MX compatible switches that are pretty easy to get for your custom keyboard. Is this a wonderful golden age for mechanical keyboard enthusiasts, allowing us to find our perfect switch and speeding us toward the Shangri-La of endgame? Or is it a confusing and pointless sea of so-called choices, many of which are so similar that they're barely distinguishable and are rarely an improvement on what is already available? Let's dig in. Most new switches aim to improve smoothness, stability, tactility, alter actuation or travel, or make the switches quieter. Worthy goals perhaps, but are we getting better switches, or are we just caught up in hype over the next big thing? A few years ago, the choice was simple. Cherry's selection of linear, tactile, or clicky switches. Then Gatoron came along with their very similar lineup. They tried to offer a smoother experience for less money. The trade-off being less stability and consistency, and perhaps quality. Zeal's collaboration with Gatoron gave us the tactile Zelios, which now come in four different weights. Kale now produce speed switches with shorter travel and actuation, pro switches that have less drastic actuation changes, and box switches that are internally quite different, offering more water resistance and in my opinion, much improved sound for their clicky switches. Halo switches were designed by Input Club, produced by Kale, and first appeared in the K-Type sold on Masterop. A dispute between the two companies led to Hakko switches made by Input Club without Masterop and with neither blackjack nor hookers. I think it's fair to say that they got a lukewarm reception from people who wanted a super tactile beast or the Topre feel. What they probably didn't want was to have to change their typing style to get the best out of them. New switches seem to always disappoint as they fail to live up to expectations. Not enough tactility, tactility in the wrong place, crunchy springs, too much wobble, twisted stems, unreliable mechanisms, out of spec stem sizes. It's impossible for everyone to agree on what switch is the best, but what do you think of the choices we have? And it doesn't end there. You can modify switches by combining parts to make a switch that aims to eliminate the perceived shortcomings of one, while preserving or accentuating the benefits of another. The Ergo Clear is an early example that took Cherry MX Clears and swapped out the spring for a lighter one. The Holy Panda combines the stem of a Halo switch and the housing of an Invir Panda. Both switches are hard to come by since they aren't in stock regularly anywhere, making this an expensive mod. Brazilian beefcake Mr. Keebs built a Duck Viper on stream a few days ago and was kind enough to send some photos. Now, most of us won't get to own a Holy Panda board unless the Panda Switch makes a return in its original form. From what I hear, that's pretty unlikely. If you factor in the combination of slider, housings and springs, the possibilities are mind-boggling. So what do you think of the crazy amount of switches we have to choose from these days? What should I try next? Let's see if we can get as many comments as there are MX Switch variants. I'll catch you later guys.